Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Most Wanted and say hello to this utter bastard of a zeppelin which is actually not a zeppelin, it is a giant floating gun disguised as a zeppelin everyone's favorite, the kobold now the kobold is uh, possibly one of the nastiest uh, grey talon craft that you are going to run into when playing From the Depths and well, basically, the reason for that is that it is a very specialized craft. As I said before, well, it's it's a gun. It is a flying gun, and that's basically all it is. So, it's a real it's a real bastard of a craft to deal with, and so let's get into why that is the case. So, firstly, well, the main draw of this thing is clearly the guns because it is a gun. And Interestingly enough, when I first uh, was having a poke at this thing in preparation for this video, I kind of thought like, yeah, I think it has like party mix ammunition, like a wide range of ammunition types for all targets. Certainly fires enough to for that to be the case, but it turns out, uh, no, it doesn't do that. It uh, has exactly two kinds of ammunition on it. So these small little, little guns, what caliber, these 250 millimeters, these are really big, really fast armor penetrator. Like, these are a little kinetic round. I say little. Th these shells are massive. It's seven meters long. And so, yeah, so AP capped head, two sabot, warheads, a base bleeder, and more gunpowder than you can shake a stick at. Armor penetration of 30, 18,000 kinetic damage. This goes straight through armor like it was nothing and is fast enough over a thousand meters per second to catch like small erratic targets which is their main function really the other shell type it has is a uh, quite a surprise actually I've started oh it's 499 millimeters that's interesting I thought it was 500 I always learn things when looking over craft actually on camera so these guns are slightly ridiculous so again lots of gunpowder base bleeder smoke Fragment, high explosive, 2 MP, a time fuse, and a disruptor conduit. Which means that this melts shields, pretty much. It goes, yeah, it goes straight through shields, and once the shields are gone, it blows things apart, shreds them, and also lands is not a defense against it, so, because of the smoke. Also, very, quite a far shell, like 463 meters per second. So, you don't want this thing shooting at you, ever, and uh, the other reason for that is that it's bad enough those shells, those kinds of shells being fired at you at a halfway sane rate, but uh, look at the insides of this thing. It's mostly, I'm not kidding when I say this thing is mostly gun, it is almost entirely gun, just most of the internals is just made up of these four massive and like ridiculously big guns, really. I'm trying to find the yeah. Okay, so these internal ones are go for the 499 millimeter like all-in-one ammo, and these outside ones are the kinetics, which makes sense really because you want the less explody things more on the outside and the more explody things on the inside. So yeah, and. So yeah, this is the thing you do not want shooting at you, and I will demonstrate that right now by giving it something to shoot at. In fact, I'm going to delete that quickly. Ah, crud. Meh. So if we spawn in a kobold, and if we spawn in... What's something that uh, usually takes damage quite well? We'll spawn in... Not wrong ally thing. I'm making a hash of this already. It's like business as usual. Business as usual. This is not as scripted as you might think. In fact, it's barely scripted at all. And I'm going to spawn in uh, uh, my baby, just so you can see what the hell this kind of thing does. And the Cobalt in particular is death to ships because it's got fast shells and if it's aiming down, it doesn't really need to arc the shells at all. So if you do this, we'll see... Well, firstly, you can see off in the distance just how fast this bastard fires. And... 
getting completely wrecked, and the Naga is already down 1% health. And the shields are gone with disruptor rounds, and those timed fuses on them mean that even if it misses by inches, it's still gonna blow chunks off things. So yeah, surviving direct volley from a kobold, very difficult. Honestly, probably not worth it, really. And because it has multiple AI, you, like, it has different target prioritizations on the AP guns and the big timed explosive guns. Which means that, well, like, it will prioritize targets that are in front of it. And, like, front is an important word when talking about the kobold. Poor Nagas are getting completely minced. Let's turn off the UI so we can see that more. And also, because the, the Cobalt fires slightly down on- Oh my god, look at that. The nose got ripped off. That is nasty. This is what a fire rate with some shells that big does. And I guess that's a reason not to make your ships uh, long and pointy, as I like to do, so... That's a problem. Although, wow, the Cobalt actually lost 2% health. That's actually amazing. Naga's not gonna win though. And I would point out the Naga is quite a bit more expensive than the Kobold as well, so... Usually this kind of thing would make me cry a little bit because I remember a time when the Naga could beat the Kobold and then the Kobold got Disruptor... Well, it got Disruptors added to the shells it fired and so there was the end of that dream. Let's see how the Kobold's doing, actually. I think the Kobold is doing absolutely fine. See, it's just shimmying back and forth, frying any shell that comes near it. Well, that one's not packed with anything, so we're not. It, this is also quite a good looking craft, you have to give it that. I'm go back over to the Naga, and you can pr you'll probably get the idea now that uh, the Kobold is just pretty much pure firepower. That's what it's got going for it. But that's not the only thing that uh, is annoying about it. You might have noticed the lambs going off. That's a, quite a strong lambs, actually. It's enough to fry, well, entire cram volleys. So, what's something that has a ridiculous amount of crams? What's something? I'll wait for the... I'll actually wait for the Naga to get destroyed, well, and then I'll show you what happens when something with more crams than the Naga tries to fire at it. It also has quite a heavily armored front. Can you stop firing for a second so I can bloody well show it off? Okay, I'll just do this. So you'll notice that here, there, and everywhere there's bits of heavy armor on that. Its nose is essentially, well, solid blocks of heavy armor with shields and lambs nodes and munition walnuts stuck in it. You cannot see anything due to the foyer, but that's okay because the Naga will die eventually. And the other thing to note is that, back here, this is where the ammo is. It's in this kind of fat bit right here. So, look in here, can you see it? Can you see the love tonight? Nope, I can't, can't see the love. So, ah, there it is. So, here we are on the tail. That's where it is. It's a uh, usual aim point spoofing tactic is just to put the ammo way in the back. And it means that any... It particularly crams, honestly. It's like anything that tries to lead shots on this thing tends to hit either, well, it tends to sail either over it or to the sides. Because this thing, yeah, you might notice it's not just going back and forth, it's also shimmying from side to side a little bit. And that just throws things off entirely. And yep, there we go. Oh, also, apparently, it ignores salvage which actually makes it really dangerous because it'll happily ignore uh, things it's already killed and we'll move straight on to the next course. So, that's uh, that's pretty freaking dangerous. And I'll just show you now. What the hell? What is going on over here? Are you disintegrating? Yes, you are. Good go, disintegrate, there you go. So now, what we are going to do I'm going to show you how strong that lamb system is, because it, it is quite damn strong. So, here we go. Kobold, where are you? And I'll 
showed off against the actually one of my more favorite Ray Talons craft, which is the Thunderclap. And I'm going to spawn it broadside because I want to, it to get every shot off it all at once. Dun, 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 dun. Built in Nato, Ray Talons. And alphabetical order, and down to T. Thunderclap! I actually love the Thunderclap because it's got lots of crams on it. It looks cool. Also, it looks funky in Steel Strider's colors. Did I spawn it in the water? I freaking did. Please get out of the water. I didn't screw it. Okay, so that's an absolutely stupidly big cram volley of big shells as well. Although apparently the missiles got through. Huh. See, that pulse slams, it's good for... What's it good for? Mostly good for dealing with shells as opposed to anything else. So missile swarms can apparently get through it. Is it actually going to fry all this? No, it isn't. What the hell? Ah. Alright then, so, uh, okay, never mind. Thunderclap's getting wrecked. Interesting. I did not. Well, apparently, if you throw enough cram shells at it, it will die. Well, there we go. This uh, moment of the video, like, uh, started much sooner than expected. This is almost an even fight. I didn't expect that because normally the Thunderclap does a lot worse than you might think like something that's so expensive would do. Then again, it is about twice as expensive as a Cobalt, so, yeah. Let's see how the Thunderclap's doing, actually. Cobalt's got all its lambs blown off, and oh dear, yeah, the... I guess the lambs... Ah, well, that was pointless. I essentially just showed up that showed you how uh, you can get past the Cobalt's defensive. I've gone off script! This is terrible. Okay. So, what have I already mentioned? So, very strong guns, heavily armored nose, strong lambs, it, it is, just the Thunderclap's volley is absolutely insane. It's got really strong frontal shields, and I'll show you that as of right the hell now. Where are you? You are there. You remind me of a teddy bear. No, you don't. Okay, so if I turn you off, and if I spawn in our favorite punching thing, the Marauder, turn you off, and you, sir, hold right there. Right. You'll probably already see a little bit just how completely bonkers the shields are on this thing, but from the front, this thing's shields are a little bit crazy. So it's like four layers thick on the very front, so here's one layer, there's another layer. Actually, where is it? Let's track from the back. So, thing right here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four layered shields, about mid-strength as well. So here we have a strength four, there's a strength three, there's a strength four, there's a strength five here somewhere. There it is, strength five, strength five. And it's got uh, overlapping ones just here, on the underside. Similar story. So, we, what do we got here? Strength 5, Strength 5. And where's the spikes? There, here they are. And Strength 5, Strength 5. So, it from the front, it is very well shielded. You'll notice it doesn't have any on its sides and rear. That's important. We'll get to that later. Mentioned the ammo in the tail. And this thing is quite PID heavy. So, unless you've essentially gutted it, it doesn't fall out of the sky easily, and it's, and it's a testament to how heavy it is that it needs one, two, three, four, five, six rather big custom jets just to keep it in the air. So this thing, well, you'll notice as well, this thing burns through fuel like crazy. And also, the PID, well, the fine PID control, the stuff that controls roll and pitch, and stuff like that. It's all in the back here, so it's all reasonably safe, as long as the Cobalt is pointing at its target. And... I 
wish I could... You were, well, you would have already seen when it was uh, shooting at the Thunderclap and the Naga, how it kind of wiggles around a bit. It goes back and forth, back and forth. Let's see if I can find the ACBs responsible for that. They're somewhere silly. Also, the fact that everything's black does not help. Here we go. No, not that. No, not that. General Purpso PID control. They still need to fix that. Okay, let's do this, because I want to actually show you the freaking control box that control things. Not that, not that. Not that, not that. It's somewhere around here. Where are you? I wish I'd remembered to look at this ahead of time. And look at that, it has a tiny little tailplane right here in the middle. Isn't that adorable? Now, where the blue... Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go! Okay, done, done, done. No enemies, propulsion components. Dun, dun, dun. Where's the bloody... Sp okay, so, propulsion components. This thing hangs around at around one and a half kilometers. So, yeah, bobs back and forth, like in that range. It kind of swans between 1,050, I mean 1,550, and 1,450. Pokes back and forth and moves reasonably erratically. So unless you've got pretty fast shells, it's surprisingly hard to hit. So, now that we've done that, I'm going to... Oh, hello, you were falling out of the sky. Interesting. Well, Taking command. can the Marauder get one free shot in? Uh, probably not. We don't also do not have time for that. So let's uh, just do that and watch the poor Marauder get missed. This is a totally fair fight. You know what? I think the Marauder's got it. I think, I think he'll be able to hand her. I think she's she is gonna do fine. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, she's taking a beating. She's taking a beating. She's doing quite well, I think. Like she's not dead yet, but. Uh, yeah, 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 well, like, not quite dead yet, not quite dead yet, hang in there, could pull a victory out, okay. Well. Gosh darn it, Marauder, I was rooting for you. So back up here, and now deleting this again, I'm gonna need to remember to turn my fleet colors back to normal afterwards, so... The thing is, the Kobold is basically invulnerable from the front. And that's a bit of a bugger if you want to take it head on, because that means taking it from the front. So what do you do? Well, you the simplest thing is don't face it head on. Like, all the defenses and all the offense is concentrated at the front of the vehicle. So you want to flank it. You want to get either to the sides of it, or you want to get right under it, or directly above it. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now with two of my craft, which uh, admittedly don't do this incredibly well, but they do it reasonably well, so here, airship, kobold, what is something fast and annoying? I'm tempted to spawn in the Hypatos, but you know what, that floating pancake has gotten enough uh, screen time as it is, so I'm going to show you some of my stuff. I don't think I've shown this craft like off on the on an actual video before but yeah 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 it'll be fun it'll be fun it'll be fun nope shut up it'll be fun so this is the schneller drach it's named in german for no other reason than i think it sounds cool and it's a very it is a pretty darn fast airship so and i'm spawning in two of them a long way away so they don't crash into each other slightly more expensive than the Kobold, but by about 140, 140, by about 30,000 materials or so. And they're armed entirely with missiles, and normally a Schnellidrock cannot take a Kobold on 101. That's just not going to happen. But you'll see what happens when the missiles come in at a slightly different angle. And the also thing to note is that those guns, while they are pretty darn good at hitting fast targets, they're not amazing at it. He said, as this one Schneller Drak is getting kind of screwed. And fired the missiles into space. That's annoying. And this is why I love APN missiles, because when they run out of fuel, they can Tokyo drift towards the target. Just like that. Especially if something doesn't have a passive radar. 
And the armor of the kobold is kind of paper thin on the sides, top, and underbelly. It in fact doesn't have armor on its underbelly. If you go here, you'll see here there's a bit of heavy armor, and then what you're seeing right there, those are auto loaders and ammo ejectors. So explosive damage in the belly will cripple this thing almost immediately. So but getting under it can be tricky, so I recommend doing what the Schnellodrachs are doing and getting behind it. See from above, absolutely paper thin. And the important thing that like the Schnellodrachs are quite happily showing off right now is that although they are getting scraped a bit because of those freaking time fuses and timed HE and frag, what the important thing is, is that this thing is moving too fast for the Cobalt to hit reliably, and they are moving about just over 100 meters per second, so that's the minimum for evading a Cobalt's fire. And the great thing also about fast-moving craft is that they can get behind it and above it and around it a lot more easily, so let's continue the show. I freaking love... okay, that one was a bit of a bummer. Mate, you should not be flying that close. Also, as I mentioned before, Cobalt's Lambs is pretty good at dealing with oncoming shells, Thunderclap demonstration notwithstanding, but it is slightly less good at dealing with incoming missiles. And once again, missiles coming in. And so, yeah, the Cobalt is only good from the front, doesn't deal with multiple craft well. And another thing to point out is that these little deadly blades on the side are what keep it going backwards and forwards and if you blow them off on one side the thing starts turning in a circle and just turning erratically and exposing its side to whatever is in front of it which is very handy for actually killing it because it means it stops shooting you and you can shoot it right in its squishy flabby bits so that's absolutely grand also like, I cannot emphasize enough, completely exposed these things. It would be not hard to stick him inside the craft, and hopefully I don't give the devs uh, ideas about that. But yeah, that's what, that's what happens. It's still doing pretty well though, because uh, these uh, thrusters on the side, but you can see it's overturning a little bit to the left, to what's in port. And here you see, incoming, round the sides, if it gets hit in the tail, it's a real problem. And these are just missiles, by the way. You can imagine what decent APS guns do. And also, if these two crash into each other, I'm going to have a cry. Nope, they're good. They are good in the herd. They are good in the neighborhood. And that's basic. That's basically it for strengths and weaknesses. From the front, really dangerous. A pushover from any other angle. Although those ejectors also save it a lot, because if it didn't have those ejectors, it would die the split second it gets hit in the sides. So, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So I guess while we're here is like, okay, so how do you survive this thing? Well, as I said before, your best bets are to dodge or outmaneuver it, because because of the shells it fires, and just that because it fires so many of them so fast, it well shields are useless, armor is useless. And lambs are also useless because those uh, big shells have uh, smoke in them. Also notice it's starting to get a little bit wobbly, a little bit wobbly, a little bit wobbly up yours, kobold. Yeah. Also, once the once the center of mass gets uh, thrown off, this thing tends to tip over. As you can probably see there, the thing is probably going to flip into the water. And it's just below 80% health, so that's the great thing about the kobold, is that... When is that you don't need to damage it much to cripple it. So you can see there, its own thrusters are now going to flip it straight into the water, and it's going to get an 80% in sinking. Yep, there it goes. So that was two craft, much cheaper than it. Just happened to be fast enough to dodge it, 
and managed to put it in the water. So, and there's a lot of great talent craft like this, like the Extinction, the Adrastos, the Hobgoblin, all those kind of things that just pack on the heavy armor. They sink like rocks. So if they get knocked out of the sky, they're done. They're they're just done. And this video actually was a lot longer than I thought it would be. Lots of practical demonstrations. So, how to kill it, summed up. How to survive it is just don't be in front of it. And how to kill it, well, you've seen how missiles can do it. You just fire missiles at it from multiple angles and just swarm them with it. Swarm it with missiles and at least some of them will get through. Particularly if missiles come at it from below the sides or from above, because then it'll just tear straight through them. Now, armor is not very thick on there at all. And let's have a look at some. Let's spawn in the kobold again, so we have something to look at. Oh my god. That was close. So, let's look at this thing. So, how would you kill it? How would you kill it? Missiles? Swarm it like crazy? You see, that was one missile right there. And it just... What did that take off? That took off... Quite a few things. It took off two... It took out an autoloader, actually. So... Where was that? It was right... Damn. That was a single little missile that did that. Cannot emphasize that enough. So what else? So APS. Advanced cannons are probably the best way to deal with this thing because... Well, I'll show you, actually. Here we go. Here we go. Spawn in the kobold. Lots of practical demonstration in this video. We like that. We like that a lot. And there's a lot of torpedoes in the water. Which means I probably have to be careful about this kind of thing. So, I'm going to spawn my test fortress up here. And this is a test fortress that I built uh, some time ago as preparing for an APS tutorial. Which I'm still going to do, by the way. So, don't panic. And it's just got really big guns on it, and that's why I'm using it right now. Please don't fall out of the sky and break, that'd be very nice of you. There we go. And so, there's, these things use uh, a bit of party mix ammunition. There's the kobold. It is facing us head on, just gonna bob back and forth, that's very good. A little bit of a difference when it's actually shimming back and forth, so... Shells we have here, that work well against the kobold. This is pretty meta party mix. This is a whopper of a disruptor warhead. This is a Hesh shell, a whopper of. And this is a penetration depth shell with an inertial fuse, which I just kind of added on to fun. Also, it has smoke, so that's the important thing. So, mixture of, disru of APS disruptor plus something that deals with armor well, like Hesh or penetration depth or even just hollow points. Or even, like, if you've got really good disruptors, like, you can use, like, like, AP rounds, like, kinetic shells. And frag, I should mention that. Frag also works pretty well. So, this is what happens when you get guns like this shooting at the kobold. It also helps to make the shells as fast as you can get away with as well. So, see, there we go. Already bits are flying off. They get smoked up. These guns are annoyingly inaccurate sometimes, and Hesh, as usual, makes an absolute mess of heavy armor. Oh, for crying out loud, did I really forget to do this? Yes, yes I did. Okay, now she should be aiming right. So already 2% health, that was what, two volleys? Ripped off the lamb's nodes on one side, and the split second those shields are downed, this thing is going to die. Come on. There we go. So this is getting through quite nicely, and these aren't even the most powerful guns that you can make with ABS. In particular, like, most campaign designs are quite vulnerable to Hesh. So this makes an absolute mockery of it. Yep. I could watch this. Can you tell that I like watching the kobold get destroyed? It is very cathartic. 
So yeah, get the idea there, destroy vehicles. Right, so advanced cannons is reasonably straightforward. Disruptor has should do the trick, make sure the shells are fast. Or just disruptor plus anything, really. If you don't actually don't feel like flanking the thing, you ballsy person. The other thing to do with crams as well, the thunderclap already showed that. Let's go hang on on the ocean bottom. Hi, Rambot. With crams, you need to use smoke, ideally, if you don't have enough cram, or just loads of cram. And just make sure that uh, you're fast enough that the damn kobold can't shoot you back. And missiles, we've seen that. This whole video is out of order. Meh. This is telling the whole fairy tale backwards. Wolf eating the ne the granny before Riding Hood gets the picnic basket or some something like that. And lasers, and now I will spawn in the Hypatos. The Kobold, when I say that the thing has all its defenses in the front, I'm not joking. That goes for smoke as well. So way over here, I'm going to spawn in something... Uh, what's our favorite fast, annoying laser thing? I, I think you can already guess what it is. Dun -dun -dun, dun -dun 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 -dun. Not that. Wrong folder. There we go. Nator Lightning Hoods. Alphabetical order, please. No, that's the date. Where are you, Byzantine executive? There you are. And I'm going to spawn you as the Scarlet Dawn. For no other reason than you look funky in red. So it's our old friend the Hypatos, if we go way over here, and it will get scratched a little bit, the Kobold only really has smoke on the front. And the Hypatos actually flies faster than the Kobold can turn, so yeah, that's a bit of an issue. There goes the ammo in one side, and the ammo on the other side is going to die very shortly. Yep. I think the Hypatos took some nasty hits there, though. But it spawned in front of the Kobold, I should mention. So yeah, lasers, it's simple. Get behind it and the lasers can go absolutely ham on this thing. Just blown the tail off, just blown the tail off. It's gonna go for the AI next. And the Kobold's tipping over because the center of mass is disrupted. Uh, Hypotos is coming back in. In front of it, but not for long. Going to orbit. Yep, Kobold is uh, going to destination f Completely. There we go. Good night, sweet prince. How fast is it moving? Kobold's going 40 meters per second sideways and upside down. So, if you like, yeah. If you were rooting, for, if you really hate the Hypatos and just were rooting for the Kobold, I am very sorry. I am very, very sorry indeed. So yeah, get the idea there. Actually, oh, I could have let that play out. That would have been great to end on. Actually, let's do it again. Let's actually, you know what? Let's see if the Naga can get revenge. And because uh, I want to spawn, where is it? Where, is it? where, where are you? Hello, Kobold. There you are. So I'm just going to spawn the Naga directly behind it to see what happens. Well, it's directly under it, actually. Behind it to the light, because I've never done this. This would never happen in the campaign, I should mention. You... Well, it can happen in the campaign, in the NATO campaign, but, like, the odds of it are slim to none. But I really, really want to see this. Where are you, babe? Where are you? Let's turn you this way. Where are you? There you are. So yeah, get behind it. Oh god, uh, that's not behind enough. Uh, please shoot faster. Oh god, we're dead. Oh no, we're not dead. Oh, crud, this has gone very badly. Yep, Naga's gonna lose again. Despite my- despite me cheesing it. I'm very sad. I am the saddest man in the world. Oh well, that's what you get for underestimating the Kobold. So! 
thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Most Wanted. Hey, maybe the Naga will still win. Uh, probably not, actually, but... Probably not. I am going to let this play out. I will let you know in the future if the Naga actually wins. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. That's a, that is a fu fuel's errand. So, I interrupted my own spiel. Please like, um, please like, comment, subscribe, and forgive me going off script. There. I think I, I, think I covered everything. Farewell!